Happy first birthday, Liberty Entrepreneurs. This is episode 56. Yeah, that's more than one a week. All right, let's do it. Welcome to the Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast, where we help people who are passionate about liberty build a free and flexible lifestyle by becoming a digital entrepreneur. I'm your host, Ash Whitener, and this is episode 56, how to get free PR for your startup with my guest, Josh Elledge. To give you an idea who Josh is, he's been on TV and radio more than 1,500 times in more than 100 different cities. He writes a syndicated column to over a million readers and has created more than $8 million in free advertising for his own company. He's now teaching thousands of entrepreneurs from around the world how to do the exact same. He understands that you're on a shoestring budget and maybe even bootstrapping your company and you don't have a lot to spend on PR, so he's here to help. What you're going to learn in this episode is the number one mistake that startups make when trying to market and generate publicity early on, how to get free or very low cost PR buzz for your startup or small business, how Josh bootstrapped a seven figure a year business and how he cut his grocery bill by 50% to help reduce the need for startup funding while he was building savingsangel.com and why pitching your expertise and leadership is so much more important than pitching your product. Also, this show is sponsored by Exodus.io. They're building a multi-cryptocurrency wallet for the desktop. It's my preferred wallet, and I'm sure you're gonna find it easy to use with a very elegant user interface. They're currently hiring a JavaScript developer for a work from home position. So if you're an experienced JavaScript dev, you like the idea from working from home and the flexibility that that gives, then drop them a line at founders at exodus.io. That's E-X-O-D-U-S dot I-O. Make sure and tell them that Liberty Entrepreneur sent you. Keep up with me on social media by following Twitter at Liberty E Podcast and Facebook slash Liberty Entrepreneurs. As always, show notes are found on our website, libertyentrepreneurs.com, and I really hope you enjoy this show. It's got a ton of passion and energy, and I know you're going to come away with a ton of insight. Today, I've got a really cool guest on the show, Josh Elledge. I met him at the Podcast Movement Conference in Chicago this year. He is the chief executive angel of Savings Angel and also the founder of Up in PR. Josh, welcome to the show. Hey, Ash, thank you so much. Yeah, so if you could give us just a quick bio of who you are and what you're passionate about. Well, I'm passionate about a great many things. I'm passionate about liberty. I'm passionate about free markets. I'm passionate about safe. I thought I'd throw that in there just to kind of curry favor with you <laughs> <laughs> and your audience, who I, I suspect we all uh, share that in common. That's right. Uh, yeah. And then uh, I'm also passionate about saving money. And uh, and I'd say today I am most passionate about helping other entrepreneurs and business owners become media celebrities so that they can in turn earn a lot of money because I'm a big believer in capitalism, baby. Yeah, absolutely. If I can create value, you can create value, man. Isn't that nice? So Josh, I know that uh, savingsangel.com is what I think was one of your biggest entrepreneurial successes. What is Savings Angel and how did that get started? Yeah. So about 10 years ago, uh, my dear wife and I uh, were going through Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University and we're kind of listening to him. It it was a phase. Uh, And we got to that one line uh, where he talks about or the one chapter in his book where he talks about doing a spending plan. And I real we really hadn't done a budget up until that point. And so I got to the line item that talked about what you spend every month at the grocery store. Mm-hmm. And I turned back to my wife and I'm like, hey, how much do we spend at the grocery store? Like four or five hundred dollars. And she laughed at me. She's like, are you kidding? We have we have uh, three kids. Uh, you and I, we spend like eight, nine hundred dollars a month. Mm-hmm. And I just remember like being 
in shock about that's, I mean, that really, that is a lot of money for the average family. And that certainly at the time was a lot of money for she and I, and I just began obsessing about that. And I thought, my gosh, there's got to be a better way to do that. And so I started studying all the experts because I'm sure you've heard of people that have been able to successfully cut their grocery bill in half. And so I read every book I could find on the subject. Um, the, really, the information online was not very great at the time, but, you know, tried to find what I could there as well. Um, and, you know, it comes to find out that you can absolutely cut your grocery bill in half. And there's two ways you can do it. You can either grow all your own food and there's nothing wrong with that, but I just did not have that skill set. <laughs> Try yeah. as I might. Not a green thumb. Uh, and here. the other, what's that again? Yeah, I don't have a green thumb either. Oh my gosh. I, I wish I did, but it's, I've just failed miserably. I, I don't know if it's my lack of patience or lack of time. Um, so aside from that, the, uh, the only other way that you can really make a huge impact uh, is that you can use manufacturer and retailer incentives at the same time on the same purchases. So what that means is you're combining coupons with retail with great sales and it has to be the best sales and it has to be the best coupons because there's a lot of coupons out there there's right now we have a data a free database at our website where we've got close to 10,000 coupons that you can use at any one time at the same time the price of products at your local grocery store if you're not shopping at Walmart which I completely uh, don't think is a good idea. Uh, you should shop at your grocery stores that rise in lower prices because you can take advantage of lost leaders. So for example, Cheerios might go on sale for uh, normal, let's say normally it's $4 a box, goes on sale, buy one, get one free. And then there happens to be a uh, $1.50 coupon available. And there are very high value coupons out there. You just have to know where and how to get them. And um, so then you're getting Cheerios for 50 cents a box. And now that's just one product out of the hundreds that you will buy every single month. So if you can save that kind of money on everything that you put in your shopping cart, then you will save 50 50 percent easily off of your grocery bill and and ash i mean for the average family who spends eight nine hundred dollars a month we're talking about four to four hundred fifty to five hundred dollars in savings every month that is a really really big deal so we just essentially took all the work that extreme couponers do and we just made all of the information accessible to all of our members so we have a huge team of people that put that together every week membership based website we charge three dollars ninety nine cents a week and our audience is able to save three four hundred dollars a month pretty yeah. easily yeah that's amazing i mean three and four hundred dollars a month that's several days of work for someone so you're literally helping someone save several days of their time by helping them save three four five hundred dollars per month in grocery bills yeah josh how long did it take you to implement this into a business from just having a hobby and saving money for, for your family so I did it myself and I immediately thought, uh, because I started sharing my results with friends and, and, uh, folks, a, 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 you know, other people, and they were like, my goodness, you should put this on the internet. And I have a background in internet development. So I'm like, yeah, I should put this on the internet and, uh, you know, kind of played around with different models and how I would do that. And finally figured out how to do a membership uh, website and uh, just put it together. But Ash, as you know, you can come up with the best idea in the world for a business. And if nobody knows about it, you're not going to succeed. In my opinion, exposure is everything. And so, and, and, you know, again, you can have the best sales funnel and conversion in the world, but if you only have a small number of people coming to find you, you're not going to be able to gather enough data. You're not going to be able to help enough people. You need lots of eyeballs. And so when I started Savings Angel, I had no money for advertising. There, there were no Facebook ads at the time. There were, you know, I could do Google AdWords, but that could get really expensive. And there's real no guarantees that I would be profitable at that. So instead, I took my background working in journalism. Now, I'd been a journalist in the United States Navy for five years. Uh, I also owned a small town newspaper for a couple of years, uh, which I had started. And so I, I knew a little bit about that landscape. So, And I knew what to ask for. So I started working with 
with small town um, newspapers. I started working with ad magazines and eventually started a radio segment um, with a local broadcaster. And I would go in every Tuesday morning and talk about the, you know, the three best deals that their listeners could get at their local grocery stores. And I didn't have to pay money for that. I just provided a lot of value and I really worked at making sure that my segment were, was entertaining, that it was valuable to the listener and they kept vi inviting me back over and over and over again. And that's how I started getting more and more clients. And then that led to a, a newspaper in the Grand Rapids Press in Grand Rapids, Michigan, which then led to me writing my own column for the Grand Rapids mm. Press, which turned into a syndicated column now in nine newspapers, which then turned to do national radio across the country and turn into now we move down to Orlando, Florida. I've been going in every Tuesday morning to my local Fox affiliate for the past six years. Uh, so that's a lot of TV. And now I do TV in 75 cities, two to three times a month. And in terms of my business plan and marketing, I don't do any advertising. Now told, uh, you know, all told, Savings Angel has grossed more than $5 million in sales. And I have spent, Ash, less than $500 in advertising over the past 10 years. Mm -hmm. We just don't need to do it um, just because we, our, our, our focus and, and, our mission is different. Our mission is just to serve as many people as we can. Uh, and then a percentage of those people, they're, they're going to see that what you have to offer is valuable and they're smart and they'll come find you. You're just such a good entrepreneur, Josh. I, I must applaud you. You found a pain in your own personal life and in your own family, and you created Savings Angel around it. You learned what to do. You built the processes. You were able to collect the coupons, build an online community and then start offering this stuff to people uh, on some free and some on a subscription basis. Yeah. Then you saw that you didn't have money for advertising another pain. Any entrepreneur knows <laughs> that if you can identify pains, then you can identify opportunities. You know, I like to use the word, uh, the phrase obstacles as opportunities. Mm. And, and, and you saw that you didn't have a lot of advertising budget. So you started going out and networking and pr addition, providing additional value wherever you can. You had experience doing, uh, you know, radio or, or doing uh, writing and being in the press. And so you started leveraging your experience to help you solve your own pain which in turn help you get more eyes on Savings Angel, which was solving pains of other people. It's just a, you're just a big pain solver, Josh. <laughs> well, you know, and I think that, you know, some of the best businesses have come from someone's personal struggle. And they said, huh, there's got to be a way that I can make this better. And at the time, you know, there was nothing out there that, that I saw that was really going to help me uh, solve my problem with not having enough money <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with that, that would help me solve this problem of being able to cut my grocery bill in half. So oh, I guess I'll just create it. Yeah. And so, you know, kind of the same thing, um, you know, two years ago, I started uh, networking. In fact, it was podcast movement uh, two years ago, Ash, that, that was my first, well, it was the first one. And I started sharing with other podcasters and entrepreneurs, my story about how I was able to build a business and and do it all through PR. Well, as you can imagine, I got inundated with people who are like, oh, I want to know how to do that. And so I started asking the question just, you know, because I, again, you know, that entrepreneurial mind, it's like, well, wait a minute. So if I were to teach this and maybe provide, you know, maybe make education available online and provide some systems that could help you with this, is this something that you would pay for? And the answer was, Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So let, let, let's transition that into Up in PR, which is your most recent business. What is Up in PR and how did that start? I think you were actually just telling us. You know, it began at Podcast Movement. And then I had a window, Ash, this is crazy. So there was a window two years ago between two conferences. I went to Podcast Movement, I talked to a lot of entrepreneurs, and yeah, I got a lot of great feedback. And so I thought, okay, well, I'm going to FinCon in about one month. <laughs> Right. Sure. Let's see if I can build a business in one month's time. <laughs> and sure enough, you know, I, I, I just, I, I did everything I could to put Savings Angel on autopilot for about a month. Uh, I think it was about a month, four to six weeks. And I just did everything I could to see how quickly I could launch a business. And of course, the first version was 
complete crap. I mean, it was, you know, the best that I could do in a short amount of time. I was able to funnel some resources into it. Uh, but uh, no, I mean, it was it, it just didn't have near the amount of services that I have today. But, you know, I, I introduced it to uh, people at uh, at FinCon and got a few uh, got a few people to sign up. And I'm like, OK, OK, this thing could work. Um, and, uh, you know, two years later, we're we're now at the point where, you know, and it's and it's been, you know, especially the first year of any business, you know, as successful as I was with Savings Angel, when you do something new, I, I have no overlap in audiences, really. I mean, my money saving audience, they're really not the same as the audience who wants to grow their small business. And so we work specifically with startups and entrepreneurs that are probably a little bit further along in their businesses, generally tend not to be the uh, the entrepreneur level or the very, very, you know, I'm broke, looking for everything I can absolutely do for free. I, I do a lot of pro bono stuff, but, you know, our target audience are probably the ones that now have some budget and they're ready to really start growing their income and their audience. And they're looking for ways to do that very economically. Right. So what is the pitch for up in PR and who are your ideal clients? Sure. So here's the, here's another problem because I've talked to a lot of small business owners, uh, who have either looked into PR or they looked into it a bit more and got proposals back, or they made the investment in PR and ended up losing their shirt. I myself blew over $25,000 hiring a PR firm for Savings Angel, and it was pretty much a goose egg for me. It was a huge waste of money, but it's, I felt like it's one of those things that I thought I was supposed to do, right? Because I, I had had such success with my own PR doing it myself. What would happen if I hired this out? Well, I could put it on autopilot or I could really speed it up. And it ended up being an abysmal failure. And there's a number of reasons why the PR industry is just not giving the startup in, you know, the guy kind of the, the startup niche, uh, exactly what they need. And it's, it's because most PR people are very good at what they do, but they're, they're really trained in college to work at the enterprise level. And if you go through, and I've looked through so many textbooks as I've really tried to study this out and figure out what is wrong here, what is wrong with the entire public relations industry that they can't give me what I want, or that this doesn't exist in the marketplace where there are good solutions for small business owners. And it's because the, the, the public relations model is based on the success formula. If you want to have a good practice in PR, you want, you want a handful of clients that you are charging a lot of billable hours. And so our model is completely different. Now that our clients tend, they need to be savvy. They need to be able to network. Um, so if they are just completely, you know, clueless and they say, I'm just an engineer and I don't know how to talk to people, that's not a good fit for us. They need to be, you know, someone within the organization needs to be comfortable with communicating. Now, based on that, then we identify the things that only we can do. I mean, we've, we spend you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in licenses for PR software, which we're able to use. And instead of, you know, treating this whole thing like a mystery black box and, oh, you don't get to know, you know, what our inner workings are, we're just completely transparent. And we say, okay, so, you know, we're going to give you four, eight or 12 hours of our time every month. And that's where we cap it, Ash. We don't take clients who want more than 12 hours of our time a month. That's not our model. Our model, and this is crazy, but we fully intend to have over a thousand clients who each pay us a thousand dollars a month. Mm. And I believe just based on our initial success, we are absolutely going to do that within five years time because there's such an appetite in the market and there are no good solutions. It doesn't exist in the marketplace up until I've created it because this is exactly the service I needed. I, I, you know, as a successful business owner myself, I know how to talk to people. So as a PR firm, what we're doing is we're doing things like connecting dots, making introductions, 
coaching and telling entrepreneurs and startups exactly what to do step by step so that they can get their name and lights and they can start having that building that ribbon of high profile media outlets that they've been appeared on. This is going to help them make more money, improve their conversion rate, raise their prices, move up the media credibility ladder, impress the snot out of investors and everybody else, including your mom, when you tell her that you were just on you know, your local CBS affiliate um, and, and you post that on Facebook, she's going to love you for that. That's the kind of work that we're doing on behalf of all of our members. So let's get down in some of the nitty gritty here, Josh, because this is just so good. And I know so many entrepreneurs and startup founders that aren't able to speak to the media. They haven't been on podcasts. They're not familiar with getting interviewed. They are shy, especially in the tech space. You know, I do come from a technical background and had to interact with both, you know, programmers and developers, engineers, as well as sales guys. And it couldn't be more different. A programmer and a sales guy couldn't have different personalities. What, what are some of these common mistakes that tech startups or founders of technical or digital type companies tend to make when presenting themselves for, to the media or in interviews? <laughs> I so love this question. Before we get into the second half, I wanted to remind you that this podcast is sponsored by Exodus.io. They are building a multi-cryptocurrency desktop wallet that I use and highly recommend. They're hiring a JavaScript developer for a work-from-home position. If you're interested in the cryptocurrency space, you are ready to become a digital entrepreneur, you like the idea of working from home on an exciting cryptocurrency project, and you have JavaScript experience, then drop them a line at founders at exodus.io. That's E-X-O-D-U-S dot I-O. And maybe you could start building your own free and flexible lifestyle by working with the Exodus team. So again, drop them a line at founders at exodus.io and make sure and tell them that Ash from Liberty Entrepreneur sent you. All right, let's get back to the show. What are some of these common mistakes that tech startups or founders of technical or digital type companies tend to make when presenting themselves for, to the media or in interviews? <laughs> I so love this question because I teach this is I, I, I've done a lot of pro bono education to incubator groups and accelerator groups. I've done a lot of speaking to uh, rooms full of attorneys and real estate agents and you know startups and business owners. And I, I play this little trick on them where I say, now, here's the deal for the next 20 minutes. We're going to do a little workshop and I'm going to have you go do 20 minutes of PR work. Go. And then I just like, I let them sweat and they kind of look around the room. They kind of chuckle a little bit. And then I, again, I make them I just stand there looking at them. I'm like, go for it. Right. And then, and then I, I, you know, after about 20, 30 seconds, I say, all right, all right, I'm not going to make you do that. But let me ask you, what were you going to do? Like, if you really had to do it, what would you do? And invariably the two things that, that business owners come up with that they think that they're supposed to do when it comes to PR work is number one, we're going to start uh, spamming and maybe you know reaching out to influencers and just telling them about our product. Okay? Or they say, well, I'm just going to, that's you know kind of the individual approach, right? Mm -hmm. That's the, the sniper approach. Or there's the shotgun approach, uh, and they, which I like to call spray and pray, where they say, well, I guess I'll just pay and blast out a press release. I think I saw something on Fiverr a while back where you could right. send a press release and yeah. then that's how all of our PR magic is going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> so let me tell you, in especially the past few years, uh, five, and I'd say five to eight years, the effectiveness of press releases has gone down the toilet. Mm. It is for most small businesses, it is a waste of your time, it, especially uh, if you just say, well, I'm just going to throw together a press release or I'm going to pay someone a hundred bucks that I found and I'm going to have them write a press release and I'm just going to pay this distribution service. I mean, you can easily spend a grand um, mm -hmm. on press release distribution. Um, and really it's going to amount to a whole bunch of jack squat. It, it really, in some cases it will work. In most cases it doesn't. And here's why. 
when you put out a press release about the new version of your product, let me just share some harsh truth and reality with you. Nobody cares about your stupid product or service. Mm -hmm. They just don't, right? It's not news. What we do care about is the stuff that people are talking about around the water cooler. Mm -hmm. Just look on Facebook. That's what people talk about. And so if you're trying to spam journalists and influencers and trying to change the conversation from something, you know, into something that nobody really cares about, it's just not going to be very successful. And so instead, what you need to be doing is you need to be a part of existing conversations. Uh, so, you know, so what this means is there's, there's a technique and it's called newsjacking and all this really is, and this is what I want you to do. And, and, and Ash, we're going to take a step back in just a second, but just to kind of finish this thought, um, cause really I don't want you to go and do this immediately, but print, you know, just as a principle, I want to share with you what my philosophy is, sure. is that you play the long game. You don't pitch your product. You don't pitch your service. You pitch your expertise and your thought leadership as it relates to things that people are already talking about. So you're going to pay attention to what's trending, and then you are going to be the eyes and the ears for your influencer friends, particularly those in the media. Right. Because then you're not putting yourself out there as trying to just sell, sell, sell. Nobody likes to be, have their door pounded on by a salesman, but you're putting out there as you have value. You can show yourself as uh, like an expert or someone that has a lot yeah. of knowledge in a certain area, and then people are going to start being curious with you. Whereas if, if you're just pounding someone's door, they're going to be like, leave me alone, go away, I don't want to buy your whatevers. You know, think of it like, you know, I'm sure you've done lots of uh, networking events or gone to conferences. And I, I know we've all had this experience where all of a sudden this guy comes into your space and you're just talking about whatever, at like a movie or something like that. And, and maybe some interesting things that you learned from that movie and some, you know, and all of a sudden this guy, you know, is a me monster and he's like, you know, just starts selling his thing. And you're like, it's like you want to wave your hand in front of his face and go, hello, is there anybody in? there there's a good pink floyd lyric for you um <laughs> uh but you know it's you know it's really it's kind of like ick you know dude just back off man be human for once and you know let me get to know you and like you and then you know based on that i'm gonna come to trust you and then naturally someone's going to ask well, tell me what you do, right. but you have to give people the space to do that. Yeah. And Ash, this is my philosophy on so many aspects of networking and public relations. Yeah. How, how important is the relationship aspect over the, the cool little bells and new bells and whistles that version seven of your product can do? Yeah. If people like you, then you know, and I can think of so many successful entrepreneurs that, that I, I like them. I don't care what it is they're selling. I'm going to support them. I'm going to check it out and I'm going to recommend it. Even if I don't personally need it because it's, I want to support them. And that is the age that we are in today, mm -hmm. particularly millennials and, you know, and people that are in their, I'd say their twenties, they crave authenticity. And, you know, look, we crave authenticity in our business leaders. We crave authenticity in our politicians and good heavens. Why do you think, you know, people hate Washington DC so much is because they're it's fake. just the same old crap. Yeah, exactly. And, and so they wonder why they're so hated. How about our media? Well, you know, again, most individual people that I work with in the media are terrific, but then I'd say systemically there are just problems and why there is a general mistrust amongst the media just because we're all a little bit suspicious of the line that we're being fed. And so if you can just say, look, I honestly, it, it, if you see value in my service or product, that's great, but that's not why I'm here. What I'm here to do is just to bring value. And, you know, if you want to, you know, if you want to connect and if you want to see if there's opportunity for collaboration or how I could make your life better or how you can make my life better, let's talk about that. Um, but right now, you know, because I'm leading in this relationship or conversation, it's up to me to bring value 
first, then as a professional, and by the way, this is just terrific for pitching anything is, you know, giving, you know, here's a great example. When you, let's say you email somebody and you get these emails all the time, I'm sure, where it's like, hey, I would like to guest blog on your website. Right. All I ask for in return is a follow link back and blah, 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 blah. You know, excuse my language, but who the hell do you think you are yeah, to exactly. ask for that? I don't know who you are. And because you're initiating the conversation, clearly you need something. Right. You are not in a position to start making demands of what I'm going to do for you. That's not how you go into a relationship. Instead, and let me just tell you a process that works so much better if you want to guest blog. Just say, I am such a fan of your work. And I just, you know, I have grown, I have learned so much over the past four or five months in reading your articles. I, I happen to be an expert in this area, and it would be my dream to kind of pay it back because of all the good that you've brought me. If you'd ever consider letting me contribute, I would be absolutely honored in whatever way that that might look. And I don't want any links back. I don't need any credit. I don't need any kind of glory. I, I just want the opportunity to serve. I'm very passionate about my particular subject, and it would be a great honor to serve your audience. Now, if you do scenario number two that I just illustrated, let me tell you that I work, I work a lot with a lot of very big influencers in a lot of spaces. If you will do that, you have now given them the space to reciprocate. Right. And because you gave them the space to reciprocate, they will professionals will always reciprocate amateurs you know sometimes you'll learn uh but professionals will always reciprocate you just have to give them the space to do it that's right i mean i re repost and retweet and promote stuff from entrepreneurs that i really appreciate what they're doing all the time and yep. they never have to ask me to do it and they do the same thing it's like speak from experience and lead with your value if you do that mm -hmm. then you're going to recognize and realize so much of that value back and i, I see it as well in liberty entrepreneurs right how can i help you that's what i say in my newsletters and in my in my podcast is like how can i help you become a more successful entrepreneur because yeah. essentially that's my way of helping you become a freer person and yes. and on that on that freedom theme josh i'd i'd like to start winding down the show now and you know enter into the freedom freedom segment here how has an entrepreneur being an entrepreneur and all that you've built how's that provided more freedom in your life your family's life and or your clients lives mm, oh my gosh well you know I, i'm a big uh ayn rand devotee and i truly believe that if i intend to be free. If I intend to be successful, if I intend to have a nice home and take nice vacations and 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 enjoy a lifestyle that that I desire, then it's not up to the government to provide it for me. It's not up to an employer to provide it for me, even though that can happen sometimes. Uh, it's not up to my customers to provide that for me. It's not their job. It is only one person's job, and that person is me. I would go far as to say that it's not the job of my higher power to provide that to me. Mm -hmm. It is me and me alone. I have my free agency. I've got my free will to do whatever I want and enjoy the rewards or consequences of that choice. And so for me, I'm very clear on why I'm here. Like what, what is my mission on earth? Well, my mission is to inspire, serve, and connect with people and create harmony, joy, and abundance in the world. And, you know, I have found that the gifts that, that I've created over the past 10 years have been for a specific reason, because at some point, you know, again, I could just continue to grow savings angel and I provide a lot of good in the world with that service. But there's also this, this inner yearning inside me that says, you know what? I feel so crazy blessed right now uh, to be able to enjoy the lifestyle that I have. I want other people to not only experience the joy of saving money. I want them to experience the joy of being truly, 
truly successful and financially free. And I know that that's going to come by leveraging some of the things that I've learned over the past 10 years and, and even the 10 years prior to that by working with large audiences and working with influencers, particularly those in the media. I, I've, I've become very good at this skill. And for me to just hold on to that and not share that with anybody, I think that would be a little selfish. And I'm just speaking for myself. Right. But I think that when you have these amazing experiences, you know, get, let just let go of that whole imposter syndrome. Every single one of us knows something that 99 percent of the population doesn't know. And you know what? There's a percentage of that 99 percent that would love to know what you know, and they are willing to pay for it. And I believe that the highest form of the relation, you're the highest value you can give to people generally tends to be the one where they end up compensating you for your time because it's so valuable. So that's where we want to take the relationship to one where we are paying them or we're exchanging uh, value back and forth or we're exchanging money uh, based on the value that one or each of us provides one another. So let's move toward that. And, uh, you know, it's amazing what we can create in the world. Josh Elledge, he's the chief executive angel at savingsangel.com and the founder of upendpr.com, helping you startup entrepreneurs get out there, get some free publicity, and learn how to handle and network yourself in society so that you can start getting on TV and sound intelligent like Josh does in interviews. I really appreciate you coming on the show, Josh. Is there any contact information you'd like to give in case my audience would like to get in touch with you? Sure. Matter of fact, I'm going to do even one better. Um, I've got a, a course. It's a Twitter publicity mastery course. Twitter, by the way, will save you thousands of dollars in PR fees if you know how to use it right. And so normally I sell a course for $100. And if you don't mind, all your listeners, I'd love to give it away for free. There's sure. nothing for sale. Um, just go and enjoy this. And you know, if you see great value in there, great. Maybe we could do some work together. Uh, but enjoy this. It's If you go to up end pr.com forward slash fire f i r e and uh, it should fill in the coupon code for you but if not the key, the coupon is called is just fire and enter that in then you will get my $100 Twitter publicity mastery course it's four videos and it's going to teach you exactly step by step how to build a huge following on Twitter and become friends with any influencer that you desire to step by step Josh, thank you so much. You are definitely a Liberty entrepreneur. I really appreciate your attitude and your perspective on the world and just keep going out there and creating value, my friend. Ash, you the man. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Josh. Take care. And that was episode 56, how to get free PR for your startup with Josh Elledge. He sure does have a lot of energy, doesn't he? And he's ready to help you get on TV and start creating some buzz around yourself, your leadership, your ideas, and your product. So if you're struggling with any type of PR strategy, or you're spending a lot of money, or you just don't have a lot of money to spend, then contact Josh at upendpr.com forward slash fire. Make sure and tell him that Ash from Liberty Entrepreneur sent you, and he'll hook you up. All right, until next time, keep building freedom. Peace.